Hey guys, Decav13 here, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Fate Grand Order. Alright, we're making some steady progress here in Gothel Damarang. And we are on Section 9 now, I believe. Let me just... just want to pull up my guide. Yeah, Section 9. Okay, starting off with some story, so... Let's see how long this takes. Well, we only have, uh, eight sections left after this. That's not bad. We're about halfway through. When do things get like this? Whenever I see two birds flying around the sky, I think back to the Age of Gods, to the long distant past. Back then, the world was vividly real, and the great gods oversaw everything. Yes, there were cruel competitions and wars replete with tragic loss. But it seems to me that the world back then was one of pride and dignity. Freya offered blessings of love and fertility. Njoror offered support, uh, supported the seas and watched over the seafarers and fishermen of the world. Baldur gave us light and beauty, while Mimir gave us the sacred well. Even during battles when, by all rights, lives should have been lost mercilessly, Odin and Thor were there to keep watch over the proceedings. Back then, I really do think we all loved one another. That's a... foolish notion. And not in the intense, fervish way that leads people to getting hurt. Are you sure about that? Isn't the Age of Gods the same period where the Trojan War took place? That seems a bit... Uh, I think it was more gentle sort of love, like the spring sun warming your skin. Agree to disagree, I guess. I'm guessing this is Ophelia. It seems like something one of the cryptors would say. At least that's how it felt to me. Which is why I don't understand. How did we end up drifting so far apart? How did we end up with such ugly, horrifying feelings within ourselves? Feelings colder than the merciless ice, and hotter than a raging fire. The targets fought off Kalyan Sky's attack and made their escape. It's still unclear which path they took once outside of the castle, but knowing your majesty, I imagine you already know exactly where they are. In addition, we found signs that the targets had come in contact with the imprisoned Divine Spirit Amalgamation. I'm only speculating here, but... I believe the prisoner may have told them about the dangerous element sealed away in Mount Hinder Fall No. 2. Just tell us where they currently are, Your Majesty, and Saber and I will head out and recapture them. No, it's not important. Leave them be. I have already decided to love both the children of Chaldea and the strange archer with the unwieldy cannon. Do not force me to repeat myself yet again, Ophelia. I will not allow them to be killed. But, Your Majesty... You are the one who empowered Sigurd's spirit origin, are you not? He is not capable of anything, anything so delicate as capturing prisoners. He would much rather kill them. He will cut down anything in his way. The Celtic woman with, within me tells me that with absolute certainty that the servant cannot be easily used. He is himself like a demonic sword, inevitably bound to hurt its wielder. I... I suggest you occasionally spend some time reflecting upon yourself, Ophelia Famous alone, daughter of humanity. While you are at it, give some thought to that girl, Mash, as well as the archer. Very well. That archer. Napoleon couldn't have possibly meant what he said. He's nothing more than a ghost, an empty shade of a human mocking me. Obviously, it was nothing more than a ploy to confuse me. Do you think I'd fall for something so absurd? Still, I should have visited them in prison. I shouldn't have let that archer deter me from that. Now I don't know if I'll ever get to talk to Mash again. 
Hi, Koyan Sky here, reporting back from the front lines. There's nothing quite losing, quite like losing my whole private army. I'm afraid the contract of these giants I borrowed from Her Majesty is now null and void, since I kind of made a botch of that attack. With all my dependable Jotun, Jotun gone, guess that means I've finally had a major loss. And yet I seem to not be the only one down in the dumps here. What's the matter, Ophelia? You're in the Queen's good graces. You're one of the cryptors and a part of their successful plot to completely upend the world. What's more, you commend an incredibly powerful servant to boot. So what could possibly be bothering you? What's on your mind? None of your business. Didn't I tell you to stay out of my room? Now, now, we girls have to stick together. This attitude right here is why Miss Kirlite doesn't want to be friends with you, you know? What would you know about- More than you think, honey. Believe it or not, I'm actually very sensitive to human emotions. On top of that, we're actually fairly similar. I know you like you're my own sister. Huh? Similar? In what way? Well, there's the fact that we both put our jobs first and foremost. We're both driven and meticulous, yet we become hopelessly devoted, perhaps to our detriment, when it comes to love. Huh? What is she talking about? But enough joking. In all seriousness, you make me sick. A real woman is supposed to be able to balance her work life and love life. But you. You have feelings for Kirshtaria Wodan, but you just can't relax about it. You can't stop worrying. You believe what you're doing is right, but you're still not comfortable with it. You love him, but you can't fully commit to his cause. You cling to him even as you keep your distance. Do you know why that is? I'll tell you. It's because you've never really had someone help you before. You've not even had so much as a single friend in all your life. Isn't that right? A friend? A mage's life is devoted for magecraft. We don't need friends. We don't. Ah, oh, that's so sad, you cheeky little thing. Pretending like you don't need others to survive. <sighs> Kirshtari is going to be so disappointed. He may like to talk big, but deep down, everything he does is motivated by a deep love of humanity. Even though he knows all too well that at their heart, humans are just wild animals instinctually driven to help, respect, and kill one another. Listen, honey. As long as you have minds of your own, hopes and dreams aren't enough to keep humanity going. You need to have a bit of sympathy and affection, too, you know? All the more so if you were never able to depend on family. Really, I'm surprised you didn't jump at the chance to marry that archer who proposed. Are you just incapable of swallowing your pride? Or is it more that you're afraid to be honest with yourself about the fact that you've never really trusted anyone? I... I'm not... Oh, yes, you are. Right this moment, you're so scared you can barely stand it, aren't you? Even though this place is a never-ending Wednesday. Stop it. Poor little rich girl. Even though you'll never have to worry about the oh-so-terrifying Sunday here, you still can't shake your anxieties about it. But you don't have to tremble in fear anymore, Ophelia. Remember where you are right now. Go on. Take a good look around. This lost belt is never ending Wednesday. It's a, that's all there can be after Odin went and died. There couldn't be any better world for you to live in Ophelia Famer Salon. Stop it. One more word and I'll wipe you out of existence. I don't care what you think you know about me. Keep talking about it and I will kill you. Leave. Right now. If you're not gone by the time I get back, I'm sending my knight after you. Is that clear? Oh my, how dreadful. Was it something I said? Well, they do say good fences make good neighbors. Very well, I apologize and I won't mention it again. On a different note, you're leaving already? Didn't you just get back? I'm going to the terrace. I need some fresh air. <laughs> That put some fire back in her eyes. Maybe I was overstepping my bounds a bit. What do you think? Hmm. I don't know what the point of you women talking to one another is. And I don't care. 
Either you were giving her a pep talk or you are trying to piss her off. Which one was it? Which do you think it was? What are you, stupid? Why would I be asking if I knew? Well, no matter. It doesn't affect me one way or the other. Play around all you like. But go too far and I'll kill you. Ooh, I'm so scared. This is ac exactly your problem, Mr. Demonic Sword Knight. Or should I say... Your Majesty? I know what I'm doing. I would never treat a valued customer with anything less than the utmost respect. And since we also have the Tree of Emptiness and that unsightly queen to worry about... I'm counting on Ophelia to help this Lost Belt's true nature shine through. Alright, assassin class enemies. That's easy enough to deal with. Hey, you know what? Let's use Da Vinci. So I'll bring Sanzo too. Should be okay with this. Another lovely day. It doesn't even look like we'll have to worry about a blistered senpai. At this pace, we should be able to reach our destination before sundown. It is great weather today, isn't it? Good morning, foe. Did you sleep well? Foe! I finished packing up the Caldea Easy Camping Kit. We can get going whenever you want, Master. What a great morning! Maybe awfully chilly here, but at least the weather's always nice and calm. Well, I was a little worried we might have to shake off some pursuers, but luckily we made it through the whole night without incident. Thank you for standing guard all night, Napoleon. It really helped us catch our breath and rest a while. Mon plaisir, mademoiselle. The stars and the aurora made it, made it really easy to pass the time. Besides, gotta use the right tool for the right job. Since we heroic spirits don't need to sleep, I was obviously the best choice. We don't need to eat, we don't need to eat either, of course. But we can still enjoy a good meal. Gotta say, these rations you brought with you are impressive. I had no idea we'd, we'd come so far with how we made and preserved food. If only my grand army had that kind of food. Best we could come up with was bottled goods. And trust me, those weren't much help in Russia. I wish I'd been able to mass produce canned goods. Things might have turned out differently. You offered 12,000 francs to anyone who could make better rations, right? You really know your stuff, Private? That's right, I held a contest to see who could come up with the best way to improve our rations. A confectioner by the name of Nicholas Abbott ended up winning. He came up with the airtight container and the idea to sterilize them with heat. Of course, since we used glass bottles, they ended up breaking all the time, which is a real mess in more ways than one. Fofo! But you did still pay Abbott the full reward, right? Of course! I'm nothing if not generous, you know? Besides, he had some really great ideas. Canned goods and those things you call vacuum packs all originate from Abbott's work with bottles. That goes for Caldeo's rations, too. Pretty impressive when you think about it. Anyway, now that we've had breakfast and our morning chit-chat, shall we be on our way? Yes, I'm ready whenever you two are. I would have liked to report our current status to everyone on the border before we left, but... Fo fo fo. Yes, Fo. I know there's no point in asking for the impossible. Even if Da Vinci has expanded her mystic codes, oh boy! Even if Da Vinci had, has expanded her mystic code drones' ex comms range, given our current location, no way could it reach all the way out here. Right. At the moment, calling them just isn't feasible. 
Guess we'll just have to find this other goddess first then. On with the ultra high speed cross country ski tour! I wonder if we'll have to scale a mountain before we can reach her. Our destination is Mount Galdopigen, the tallest mountain in all of Scandinavia. According to the data Ilya sent me, this third goddess should be imprisoned at the mountain's peak. On a map from proper human history, it will be located on the old Jotunheimen Mountains, the uh, highlands, but... But around here, it's at the very end of this endless string of snow and icy mountains. At least it's a straight shot there. Right. We're currently about 230 kilometers away. If I can maintain my booster's second gear, we should reach it in a few hours. You have some awfully impressive equipment. Its magical energy efficiency isn't half bad either. Once we get this third goddess on our side, I'd love to have a word or two with whoever made it. Especially since my skis are handmade. Fo, 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 fo. No, even I couldn't ask someone to carry me like you're getting done. No, really. I couldn't. I won't. I mean it. Mademoiselle, make sure you hold on tight to Private John. I'm gonna go on ahead and pick up the pace. With that strength and stamina of a heroic spirit, cruising at 200 clicks per hour is a breeze. Still, I can't really keep that speed up all the time over the obstacles that keep popping up. Like, say, giants or a pack of wild animals. Case in point. Yes, I see them. Master, I'm detecting several magical energy signals in our vicinity. They don't appear to be giants. They're ice beasts. I t it'd take too long to go around them, and we don't want them calling their friends for help. So I say we take them out nice and quick. Once we wrap this up, let's keep on moving. You got it! Oh wow, all art cards, nice. Well, I mean, we have three casters, of course we do. Alright, Da Vinci's all prepped for the last wave now. And Sanzo can go with her NP at any time. Wow, three three crits in a row. How actually expected. That 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 seems like something that would happen to me, of course. Oh, I thought it was supposed to be another crit. I was gonna fucking say, like, can you guys calm the fuck down? I didn't get the NP strength up. Oh, he's not Da Vinci. Oh, just all Sanzo's cards. Oh, that just killed both of them? Oh, no. No, just barely didn't kill that e-scammer. So I can't find the right volume for what I want to put the fucking uh, emulator at. 
他にも試したいことがあったのにな。We destroyed all the ice beasts. The battle is over. Alright then, let's get our march back underway. We can even make a friendly race of it. Um, I'm sorry, Napoleon, but I have to refuse. That would be far too dangerous. Fo, fo, fo! You're starting with the Mademoiselle Pupper? Just be careful the wind doesn't blow you away. Equipping the Ordnax all our sport attachments now. Boosters activated. Switching from thruster mode's first gear to booster. All our sports standing by. Three, two, one. Ignition! Flaming Mansion. Berserkers. Well, that makes it easy to pick a sport. Where are you, XX? Yeah, I'll just do that. That gives her better attack. Whoa! I've never seen anything like that before! The whole palace is on fire! Fo fo! The whole building looks like it's made of ice, but there's a wall of fire surrounding it. The fire here is just like the fire in the ice mountains. It's not melting anything around it, like it's just suspended in the air, not burning anything at all. A palace of fire. Fo fo, Q. Don't get near it, fo. Fo fo. This fire is definitely made with magecraft. Nothing else could keep it burning without without melting the ice palace. Maybe there's a rune of burning inscribed somewhere. Or maybe the fire was brought here from a nearby mountain. Whatever the, ca whatever the case, it makes for a hell of a bounded field. I can feel it tingling on my skin all the way from here. But that only makes sense. Of course, Mount Galhipogen, the highest summit in Scandinavia, would have a fiery fortress on top of it. We are trying to bust out a goddess who could be the key to turning everything around here, after all. It'll take more than a barrier of magecraft flame to turn this heroic spirit away. Please be careful, Napoleon. I think this is the Palace of Fire. Both in the poem Sigurd... <laughs> Fucking... I think it's Sigurd Rifumal. <laughs> Probably wrong. Both in the poem Sigurd Rifumal of the poetic Edda and the Volsunga saga mention a palace on top of Mount Hinderfall surrounded by a fiery hedge made from the shield of the gods. It was called the Palace of Fire. It's a bounded field created by Odin himself. This could be a large scale ritual that uses magecraft taken from mythology. Perhaps a bounded field that's in place since the age of the gods. Hmm. Those flames, the shield of the gods. Nah, this bounded field hasn't been here since the age of gods. At best, it's an imitation. A bit of fancy magecraft that just looks the part. Use those baby purples of yours, mademoiselle. I know your senses are dulled from the magical energy in the snow and fire around here, but look closer. There they are inside the fire, plain as day. Now I see them. Those are moose spell giants, just like the ones at the castle. I could tell they were stronger than the Jotnar or the Bergrisar, but now there's several of them. 
They're walking around in that inferno like it's a cool day in autumn. Damned impressive. I love tough swords who are proud of it. I don't see anything wrapped up like before, but given how their legs are in chains, I'm guessing they're here on guard duty. Maybe the queen's just into that sort of thing. Or maybe... Could it be Ophelia? Truly? Whatever these guys have going on, it's in very poor taste, considering the old Jotunheimen highlands of myth. Weren't exactly a place... Weren't exactly the place to be for the likes of them. If there's one thing these moose spell over there are lacking, it's charm. Don't you agree, fire giants? <laughs> You're a spirited bunch, aren't you? I wouldn't have guessed giants were such good sports. Right, we'll need to get through them if we're going to fulfill our objective. Or next output is stable. Auto maintenance function activated. Amalgam goad standing by. Alright, let's smash our way through these guys. Alright, so some moose spell giants. Oh, it's just three enemies in total. <laughs> One in the first wave, two in the second. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I, something tells me it's just going to keep attacking Hokusai. Yeesh. Jeez, this fire's kind of messing with my emulator, huh? Yeah, he's just gonna keep going after Hokusai. I guess Hokusai has some divinity? I mean, hey, you know, whatever makes my job fucking easier. Man, you really just not, do not want to bring divinity servants. They should take out the first one at least. I think the MP just handle. I mean, you know, MP5. That's not to scare that one. Wow, 50 and 70, we didn't get either of those. That, that, that's about right. I don't want to bother and go with a chain. At first I was like, wait, why isn't it applying defense down? Because you're already dead, you fucking idiot, that's why. Well, 
Nice work with that shield. It's even throwing the giants off balance. All right, I think that calls for another cannon blast. Take this! Target silenced. That takes care of the last moose spell. Does that mean the battle is over for now? Nope, I'm afraid it's not going to be that easy. There's still more of them, man. Me. It's hard for me to make. It's hard, still hard to make out magical energy here. That's not the only unusual thing in the air. Can you smell it? Oh, now that you mention it, I can faintly make out hydrogen sulfide. That smell. Sulfur! That's the scent of a, vol of a volcano. Take another look at the flames, then at the palace. Does it look like the flames have gone down in intensity at all? The palace door has opened up? The flames haven't died down at all. I can't find so much as a seam in that boundless in that bounded field. Maybe this means we need to use magecraft to break through it? Disabling such a powerful bounded field would be a problem for Senpai and me. Neither of us is able to use powerful magecraft like that. We need a caster to help us. But the things are we can't count on summoning one long term. Not to mention we still have those guards to contend with. Here they come. More moose spell are emerging from the fire. Ooh la la, there's even more of them now. This must be the rest of the pack. The smart move here is to rush us all at once, fire giants. Don't bother coming one at a time. Foo foo! Kyo! <laughs> Easy there, pupper. I'll pet you all you want once the battle is over. But right now you should stay back. What's that sound? Up in the sky! It's huge! Senpai behind me, get down! Foo! Foo! Senpai, look. What is that? I'm not sure. It looks like some sort of large flying creature? Okay, then. <laughs> New enemy thrown in the mix. Unknown. It's, it's, it's a caster enemy. Alright, so this one you're better off just bringing fucking riders. Because it's two, two, two moose spells and then the fucking new enemy. Where are my riders at? Anyone got a single target rider? Ooh, you know what? It's a shame CE is not that great, but oh well. Uh, let me go with my Da Vinci. That should be good. I think I'll start the next section after this. That one's only three sections. Two story only, and then... Fairly easy wave. Of giants and ice beasts. Eleven is what I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I should use Golden Body. I always forget to use Golden Body first turn. Uh oh. Forgot Ryoma has a uh, divinity. Oh, never mind. I guess he doesn't. I guess it was just ra what was random. They just went after him twice, three times. Again, why why didn't I use fucking tactician device? I'm such a fucking idiot. I swear. Yeah, he he doesn't need any defense debuffs on him. Oh. 
Oh, he's probably, well. <laughs> Don't kill him. Fuck. Yeah, it's about right. <sighs> oh well. No, I actually realize how fitting it is for Cosmos and the Lost Thought. The two of my servants that I've actually leveled up to 90 are uh, Little Da Vinci and Holmes. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that until now. It's really cute. Damn, 40 C stars. When that fucking happen? Oh right, two quick cards last turn. That 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 would seem to do it. All right, single caster with three hundred eighty-six thousand. Let's increase crit strength. Entry, beautiful journey, and yeah. Oh, I should have used the crit up. Ah, well. I mean, hey, we're getting a crit up from uh, Holmes' skill. Quite a nice one, too. I think she gets MP strength up, right? Oh, art, ooh, art's up. That, that's even better. <laughs> Come on, I couldn't get that crit. This thing drains my sea stars. What fun. Let's go with the Holmes chain, give me some stars. Don't kill Da Vinci. Stop stealing my stars, you dickhead! Ooh, that's good. Save that one for last. Ooh, that's nice. And there go all of my stars now. Alright, golden body. Do that too. It's probably gonna attack Da Vinci again. Yeah, how'd I guess? I should be able to just finish this with Divin- I mean, this should finish it. I don't see why it wouldn't. Oh, there we go. Now I get all these crits. I actually get full NP again. <laughs> God, I love art servants. Damn, this thing's tough! I still can't tell what the hell it is, but it looks to be about as hard as the Sphinx's face. The fire giants certainly aren't helping either. Doesn't look like they're working together, though. 
It looks like they're both so focused on us that they're not even seeing each other. Yep, I'd say you're right about that. I must have really pissed this thing off. I just wish I knew what I did to make it so angry. It doesn't look too bad at a glance. <laughs> I think it just left. Nope, I still got nothing. Hmm. I don't suppose you two have any idea, do you? Well, it kind of looks like a living creature, I guess. I agree, Master. It seems like it is, too. It is exceptionally aggressive. If it were made from Magecraft, I would, I'd expect it to be more mechanical. It could be a phantasmal unit to this lost belt. Or it could be a demonic beast from a self-contained ecosystem that has never been mentioned in any myth or legend. Fo kyo! Huh? It's not? Go on then, Fo. Tell us everything you can. Fo! 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 You know what it is, Fo? I'm sorry, Senpai. I can grasp the idea, but I can't exactly make sense of it as a language. I've always admired Dr. Doolittle, but I'm afraid I just don't have that kind of talent. Okay then, back to the battle! R right understood. You take the giants out first. Things will get real hard, real out of hand. Things will get out of hand real fast if they gang up on us. Three fire giants left. All right, let's do this thing. I'll fill them all up with holes. One. Two. Three! Break them! Smash them! Make your way through! We've destroyed all moose. No, wait! The third one is still alive! And here I thought I'd score a direct hit. <laughs> now I see. This one's a real fiery warrior. Used its fallen comrade's body as a human. uh. giant shield. Brave and cold blooded. I love it! Whoa there! He started hurling boulders, I mean large blocks of ice. But don't worry, I can block them as long as I stay focused on defense. Do it. It's time to take this guy out for good. Ah! Let's see how you like a barrage! And capture froze. I fucking hate this goddamn piece of shit so much. Oh, came back. Alright. Fucking goddamn piece of shit. I hate this thing so much. And it froze again. Gotta be fucking kidding me with this thing. Consecutive impacts fired. Both the unidentified creature and the last remaining moose spell have been... GET out of HERE! The unidentified creature has been sent flying directly into the palace! The firewall shows no sign of going out, but the palace's outer wall has taken significant damage. Sorry about that. Tried to hold back, but the damn thing was so tough I ended up really going all out. Ah, oh, crap. This is bad. Just knock that thing into the palace. What if it ends up beating our sleeping beauty? Even if it doesn't, what if she ends up getting buried with the palace? It's alright. I don't think there's any reason to worry. Hmm? How can you be so sure? Just a feeling, but a strong one. If I'm right about this, then the one in the palace has to be... <laughs> foo! 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 Whoa! That thing just got knocked back out of the palace! Foo! Good morning, everyone. I am the daughter of Odin and the eldest of the Valkyries. Once I was both a demigod and, and a goddess of old. In proper human history, my story and praises were sung in the Poetic Edda and the Volsunga Saga. I am an Avenger who once loved Sigurd, only to end up taking his life followed by my own. I am Brynhild, a heroic spirit. Yeah, I'll keep going for the next section, since this one got divided up into two, and I can't exactly tell how long I've been going. Oh, well. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this one's two stories and then battle. Alright. Hey, we're making progress. Only eight sections left to go. Our big sister from proper human history has awakened. Sisters. Sisters. Come, my sisters, who all share memories with me. My true sisters who have lived since ancient times, who never depended on the queen's magical energy. I seek your counsel. Though our minds are linked, I wish to hear your voices. Uh-huh, I get it. Our big sister's woken up. Shame. I'd hope she'd just stay asleep forever. But now that she's awake, we need to do something about her. So what should we do? You know, this could be a good opportunity. Yes, you might be right. This can't be happening. Our sister from proper human history should still be sleeping soundly in her safe haven. Yes, but the fact is she is awake now, unfortunately. Then we'll need to go greet her. Yes, there's no time to waste. Even if she is from proper human history, she's still our sister. She was the first Valkyrie, the one closest to the gods, and so she is the ultimate Valkyrie. Though we may all be demigods, her divine core is much closer to that of a true goddess than ours. We cannot afford for her to side with those humans. Yeah, you're right. We've gotta find her now. We need to save her before it's too late. Having her remain with humans after she fell asleep in blissful ignorance would be cruel. Right, we should go greet her in soon, even if she doesn't wish to see us. If Brynhild intends to side with the humans from proper human history over our Scandinavia, we will need to show her how foolish that would be. Foo, foo! Oh my, you're such an adorable little creature. Foe certainly seems to like her. Does this mean she's our ally? Maybe she's a heroic spirit without a master who happened to materialize in this Lost Belt, like Beowulf and Billy. She doesn't seem to have the same magical energy signature as this Lost Belt, so I'm inclined to think she really is the Brynhild from proper human history. I had a feeling that, that might be the case when I first saw that burning palace. After all, a palace surrounded by fire appears in her legend. She was an ex-Valkyrie and Sigurd's spouse, right? Yes, exactly. I am also the I am also the one who killed him. That is why I am strong. Shield Maiden Mash Kirlite, John. I am prepared to devote myself, body and soul, to your journey to restore proper human history. That I am here in this lost belt means there is someone with whom I must do battle. The third goddess. I feel that may be something of an exaggeration. But even if it is, I am ready and willing to help you however I can, John. We'd be glad to have you, Brunhild. On my name, I swear to you I will be of use. Your eyes are the color of purple crystal. Gorgeous. You certainly are the eldest of the Valkyries. So those jaw-dropping looks of yours are thanks to the old gods making you themselves, huh? Thanks, old rulers of Scandinavia. Thanks for leaving such a beauty in the world after you left. Now that I've come face to face with that beauty myself, I'm helpless to do anything but drink it in. I would love nothing more than to get to know you better, Brynhild. Fo! Fo! I'm... um... I'm sorry. Um, you are the Emperor of France, yes? That is not what I meant when I said I would devote myself body and soul. I'm sorry. Oh la la, you're beautiful and you're flustered too. <laughs> Making beautiful women blush really is one of life's gr great pleasures for men, isn't it? No, wait, that may have sounded really bad. Uh, would you mind if I took that back, fair maiden? Um, Napoleon, I'm sorry to interrupt your attempts at flirting, but what about Ophelia? Didn't you already propose to her? 
Ouch, you've got me there, mademoiselle. You're right, my heart does belong to Ophelia. I may be a man of France, but I'm also a man of Corsica. I think that may be why my spirit origin has these strange... quirks. What do you mean by that? Well, it seems that once I materialize, I can't help but look for a lover. No, seriously. Still, it's just the one. It's not like I'm going around hitting on everything that moves. And once I find my one true love, I can't help but profess love's virtues. It's a real burden, you know? Fo fo fo. Fo. Oh, I'm glad to hear you understand, pupper. Um, just one? That's right. Napoleon the heroic spirit only pr professes his love to one person per materialization. Uh, okay. But what about what you were just saying to Brynhild? Yeah, what happened to just the one, huh? Whoa, whoa, hang on. I think you've got the wrong idea. That wasn't a profession of love. I was just being chivalrous. Is that chivalry? Just because I found my true love here doesn't mean I'm, um, immune to other women's charms. But that's not the same thing as professing true love. Look, I'm a, I'm a passionate guy, and sometimes I just can't help myself. Whatever I used to be like, be like, that seems to be at least the case now. Foo, foo! <laughs> Easy there, doggo. I'm not actually a dog person, you know. Didn't you say you were okay with dogs before? Oh, whoops. No, no, you've got me all wrong. It's not like I dislike them. It's just pugs I have trouble with. Ever since my beloved wife's wife Josephine's just bit me out of nowhere. It took a real chunk out of me, too. So never really gotten on well with dogs since then. Oh my. I didn't know your Imperial Majesty was married. I see, I see. That's wonderful to hear. What's more, you say you have eyes for someone named Ophelia right now? Fo fo fo. My my. I see. A woman named Ophelia. That won't do. No, that won't do at all. Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, you've tried to deceive women. No, people in general with love. That won't do at all. Oh boy. Oh la la, I can't believe it! I was only half serious! I never expected this beauty to turn her purple crystalline gaze on me so seriously. Does this mean... Your answer is we? That you accept the love I have to offer you? If so, it would be uncouth of me to refuse. <laughs> who care of, who cares if these two humans object? Uh... Napoleon just tried to hug a pile of snow, and now he's face down in it. Foo foo! <laughs> Was that some sort of illusion? It does seem to be the case. Good job, Brunhild. It was Magecraft intended to interfere with the target site. As an archer, Napoleon should be resistant to that sort of Magecraft, yet it still worked. My Magecraft comes from primordial runes, power from the Age of Gods bestowed upon me by Odin himself. Primordial runes? That's the same kind of power that Sahath Scotty wields. That spell just now is far from the runes' full power. It was a tiny fraction at most. Even so, not even a powerful heroic spirit can easily resist their effects. Now why don't we have the Emperor cool down for a bit? That's a very good idea. His fire is burning very, uh... <laughs> very bright right now. No doubt he was delirious from some terrible fever. Oh, I know. That must have been what they call spring fever. I'm afraid not. True romance is no mere fever. It does not stop until you burst into flame. Besides, I really am sorry, but if a hero I'm sworn to love comes close to me, I may just end up killing him. I see. Then Sigurd is here, as I, su as I suspected. Yes, that explains a great deal. Very well. Now I understand what it is I must do. When I first materialized in this Lost Belt, I wandered it aimlessly, without understanding why I was here. 
As I went around defeating the giants who attacked me, I was sealed away by my sisters, as well as a woman calling herself a cryptor. From then on, I remained asleep in the palace, protected by a bounded field modeled after, modeled after those created by my father, Odin, until you awoke me. Now at last, I finally understand. John, I must apologize to you in advance. Should I do battle with Sigurd, I hope you will forgive me if I embarrass myself. Huh? When I see him, I'm quite certain I won't be able to restrain myself. I may even get so worked up that I can no longer speak, and my spear may grow larger too. I will do my best to resist my urges, but the possibility remains that I may end up going into a rage like a berserker. So... Got it. Understood, Brynhild. It's great to have you on our side. Thank you. It's possible this Sigurd is not a servant for a proper human history. He may not be the Sigurd I know, but someone else with an entire- with an absolutely no knowledge of who I am. But even if that is the case, I'm sure I- I don't know if I agree with that, Mademoiselle Valkyrie. Caesar and I said he might not be long, belong to this lost belt, and I'm inclined to agree. Napoleon? He's still got snow on his head. This lost belt's been exactly the same ever since 1000 BC. It's a world basically designed by and for Sahath Scotty, a world where the entire human population has been locked down for nearly 3,000 years. No one here has any desires intense enough to create an evil dragon like Fafnir for Sigurd to slay. What's more, there's no economy to stimulate desire. Hell, there's not even any concept, concept of a nation-state. So that tells us something. Something about Sigurd besides whether he's from the Age of Gods or the A.D. era. At the very least, we know that in this Lost Belt, Sigurd would never have been born. And even if he had, he could never have become a hero, as there could not have been an evil dragon for him to defeat. There you have it. So this is a world without heroes. Except for you and me. Fool. <laughs> no need to get all mopey about it, pupper. Even if there aren't any heroes in this world, Brynhild and I are still here. Not to mention your two human friends. Along with you, Doggo. And that isn't all. That shadow border thing of yours is around somewhere too, right? A band of humans and heroic spirits. All working together to restore humanity. Yeah, you're right. Yes, they're all very dependable. It's been, what, four or five days since we first met? It's probably about time you brought your shield and armor in for a tune-up, mademoiselle. Since we've met up with the third goddess and all, now seems like a good time to head back. You said they were located around southern Sweden, right? That's right. The borders parked are in southern Sweden, near Nor... Nor... Near Norrköping. Near Norrköping. I think we should be able to call them again if we return to Lake Vanern area. That's near Village 23. Alright, for the moment, let's head back to southern Sweden. Hey, Valkyrie lady, how are you at skiing? Don't worry at all if you're just starting out. I'd be more than happy to take you by the hand, hold your waist, and show you how it's done. <laughs> you're rather amusing, Emperor Napoleon. But I can't. I mustn't. I'm sorry. Please understand, it's extremely dangerous for a qualified hero to get too close to me. Dangerous? Sounds thrilling. Don't worry, I'm perfectly delighted to risk my life for a beautiful woman. Foo, foul! Napoleon, does that mean for Ophelia you're also... Of course! <laughs> at any rate, you were talking about skiing? No, I'm not very skilled at it, but worry not. I'm quite comfortable traversing snow. Foo, foo! Oh, hello. Are you sure you want to ride on my shoulder? The wind will be rather strong. Mm, cue, foo, foo! I see you've got good taste in women, pupper. <laughs> All right, then. Let's get our new Grand Army underway. New Grand Army moving out. Right. Wow. Oh. 
We're definitely not in the situation we were when we first got here. That's good. Okay, where are we right now? The old Ska the old Skagarak Strait. On a map from proper human history, this will be part of the sea. Fo? Oh yes. Fo, this is the ocean. Or at least it wouldn't be on a proper human history map. But around here it's nothing but frost, snow, and mountains as far as the eye can see. Just like most of this lost belt. We've also passed lakes that are nothing more than snowfields now. Guess that just means there's seawater and lakes underneath all this ice and snow. Seawater in this particular case. It's uncharted territory for both me and Senpai. This place is relatively warm. It was much chillier up around Jotunheimen. Oh yeah, good point. Every bit of this lost belt is still covered with snow. But the area up from, uh, from Oslo up to Mount Gald Galdopigan is had a lot of icy mountains as well. Now that you mention it, it was colder around there than it is here. That still feels strange to call this area warm, though. That's true. The word warm seems to have lost all meaning here. <laughs> well said. Hmm. Alright, I've decided. While we're doing this, we may as well make a little pit stop. Pit stop? Something like that. Besides, I'd like to find out as much information as we can. But since it's getting close to sunset, why don't we take a break right around here? It's Napoleon, the Empy Man. Hey everyone, the Empy Man's back. Who's that pretty lady with you? Is she your mate? Maybe she's an envoy. She's so beautiful. She's got armor and a spear. No, 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 she's not my mate. Then again, people in this Lost Belt don't have any concept of love or marriage, so I guess I understand the confusion. Hey, hey kid, leave her alone. Can't you see you're bothering her? Oh no, I don't mind. I quite like children. It's lovely to meet you, little ones. Would you like to play with me? Yay! You sure? Of course. It's no trouble at all. Besides, don't you need to speak with the adults? Yeah, that I do. You're a real considerate lady, aren't you? This place is... It looks exactly like Village 23. Napoleon said this was Village 67. But while the details are a bit different, the basic structure is exactly the same. I'd say they're about 80% similar. I wonder if this was intentional. All that aside, they've been so welcoming to us. And just look how happy these children are. Hey, are you guys Mr. Nap Napoleon's friends? Uh, yes. I suppose you could say that. And here, this is for you. Hold on. Mr. Napoleon always plays with us when he visits, so we want to thank his friends, too. Thank you. These flowers are very pretty. We all grow them together. Sorry they're not the special kind we saved for the ordained day. Please, don't be. I'm very happy to have them. Foo, foo! Well, what are you? Want to play tag? Yeah, I know why we're doing this, but it's still hard. Senpai. Whoa, whoa, why the long faces, you two? This, this is your first time here meeting these people. Turn those frowns upside down. Traveling's meant to be fun. Napoleon, do you think you'd stop smacking Senpai on the back so hard? Oh, sorry. Didn't think it was that hard. Anyway, I asked around a bit, and it sounds like it's business as usual here. Nobody's seen any envoys flying around in patrol, or heard anything about giants acting up. Looks like we're safe for the moment. In that case, we should be able to get a very good night's sleep. Yep. 
only thing is... There's a bounded field here. A bounded field? Looks like a new one's been put up around the village's gate and surrounding walls. Brynhild's the one who noticed it. Can't fool a primordial rune user. With apologies for my presumptuousness. Yes, I detected a bounded field besides the one Sahath Scotty put up to protect humans from giants in the cold. It is a powerful field designed to defend against outside enemies, like a great shield or impregnable fortress. I can't make out the exact spell type, <clears throat> but I do know it is magecraft on a level fitting the Age of Gods. If nothing else, I can tell you it is not based in runes, which would mean the Queen didn't make it. <clears throat> so, somebody made the bounded field here stronger? Yes. Who could have done that? The only person who sided with the Lost Belt and uses non-rune magic is... Ophelia. But that can't be right. Her specialty is, summonings, is summoning spells, not bounded fields. Canis didn't seem to possess a spirit origin that was particularly skilled at magecraft either. But then, if neither of them did it, who could have possibly... Foo! 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 Oh, welcome back, foe. Hmm. Oh well, mulligan over's not gonna get us anywhere. Let's just take it easy for the rest of the day, then pick things back up tomorrow. Aha! There you are! Foe! Director? I knew I could do it if I tried. That didn't take long at all. Shadow Border here, I trust you can hear me. Director! <laughs> Don't be so surprised. It's a miraculous coincidence. I have no earthly idea how we got reconnected. In this case, my abundant charm played no part whatsoever. Oh, and incidentally, it seems we only be we only stay connected for a few more seconds at best. Whoa, who's the pudgy guy? See that Gordoff you were telling me about? I can't tell if I should be wary of him or not. Come on, old man, step on it. Tell them what we just found out. Hurry! Oh, right. This is no time for formalities. John, we have an emergency on our hands. The Old Lake Vanern. A group of giants is headed toward the village where Gerda lives, even as we speak. There's no way a bunch of children and young adults can fight them off. If the giants force their way inside, they'll kill the whole lot. Oh, no. Village 23, huh? Master. Foo, foo! One of our Mr. Code drones only just picked it up. I don't know where you are right now, but you need to get there double time and rescue them. That village may be useless to us as a source of new information now, but it could still easily serve as a base for our allies. You must protect it at all costs. What are we waiting for? Agreed. I cannot stand idly by as giants massacre children. That is not how a proper hero should fight. Come on. The odds are against us. The odds are against us making it there in time. But our grand army is nothing if not fast. Private John is right. We move out at top speed right now. All right. Casters. It's a shame I don't really have any other casters. You know, I, I would bring Arjuna Alder, but you know, divinity. Not not exactly the best idea to bring against giants. So Ku will do for now. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Actually, you know what? Why am I gonna bring Ku and I can just bring fucking, uh. XX? That seems like a smarter move. What is this? It's. Oh, that's not bad. It's just two waves again. So, really, I might as well just save Anna's NP for f the fucking. Second wave with the Berserkers. We made it to Village 23, Senpai. 
I didn't see any giants outside. Are they already inside? I'm afraid that's a definite possibility. The outer walls and gate all appear to be intact, but we still can't see what's happening around the fields. I don't like that we had to climb over the gate without permission. This is an emergency. Foo, foo! I'm a little worn out after all that high-speed cross-country skiing. Well, I'll worry about that later. Still, I don't see any giants around here. Let us hurry. We should start by going to the village center. Right! This is it! The center of the village! I don't see any people out and about. Maybe they hold up inside to stay safe. Or maybe we're already too late. But if we are... Plenty of these homes still have lights on. That's true. What's going on? Wh who's there? I thought I heard voices. You shouldn't be out this late. Maybe I'm not really in a position to say anything after I went outside the village, but... Gerda! That voice! Lady Mash, Lord John, and that man from the Ordained Day! This is amazing. And you have another envoy with you today, too? Wait, if you're here, that must mean you stopped fighting with the other envoys. Oh, what a relief. I was so worried about you after that big fight you had. Hey, how did you get through the gate? It's so big and heavy that it takes several grown-ups to open. Oh, but we shouldn't be talking out here. We don't want to disturb anyone. Won't you come inside? I have some soup I can heat up if you'd like. I bet you're really cold after being out there all night. Oh, uh, well... Are we sure this village was attacked by giants? Hmm? Hang on. This magical energy is calm and gentle. Doesn't definitely doesn't belong to a rampaging giant. Phew. No one is hurt. That is all that matters. But I do have to wonder, why did that person from Caldea tell us giants were attacking? Gerda, do you mind if I ask you a question? I'm not sure I'll be able to answer it well since I don't know very many things, but sure. Did anything unusual happen in the village today? Particularly from sunset until about now? Oh yes, that I do... That I do know about. Right before the sunset, a stranger came up to the gate from outside. The grown-ups offered shelter from the cold, but the stranger just said, No need for that. I'm not cold. But their clothes were all ragged, and their face was hidden, so we were worried. We invited them inside again, but they just clicked their tongue and said, I'm from Caldea. Don't worry about me. After that, the stranger said a blessing for everyone in the village and then just left. Senpai, did you hear that? This all sound strengthened the bounded field without showing their face. Yes, I believe there was someone else who claimed to be from Caldea in Russia as well. Oh, and Laura said she thought she heard really loud footsteps. We usually never hear loud footsteps except on the ordained day, so she wasn't sure if they belonged to the giants or not. But she did say she thought she could hear them shortly before the stranger showed up. I think I know what's going on. Those giants probably were on their way to Village 23, but the stranger must have driven them away. Which means... We hurried all this way... for nothing. I mean, it's great that no one was hurt, but... Hmm... Foo, foo, foo! Well... Looks like our job was done for us. Thank you for the delicious soup, Gerda. It really warmed me up. Thank you, Gerda. <laughs> I'm so glad you liked it. It's Village's, it's Village 23's traditional fish soup recipe. Okay, I'm going to clean up. Please stay here and relax, Lady Mash. You too, foe. Fo fo. Oh, please, don't worry about us, Gerda. Let me help you clean up. No, no, Lady Mash. You and Lord John should relax. That's what guests are supposed to do. I remember hearing that in one of our legends. You know, it's amazing. I never thought I would actually get to entertain guests of my own someday. <laughs> Please, enjoy your stay. That soup really was yummy. Yes, it really was.
Oh, good. You're both done eating. Perfect. This place may not be in danger of running out of food, but they're not exactly enjoying a surplus. Having them share what little they have with heroic spirits like us who don't need to eat. Well, I can't help but feel bad about that. Don't worry, Napoleon. I explained that you and Brynhild have already, had already eaten earlier. So... Right. There is indeed a new bounded field around the outer walls and gate. It's the same as the one around Village 67. It's a powerful bounded field, but it isn't made from runes. Well, there is one thing that's slightly different. Looks like the original bounded field had a small tear in it. Probably from our fight with the envoys. I'm guessing that's what drew the giants here. So, basically... Someone else cleaned up the mess I made. Not only that, they did a brilliant job repairing the tear. Not so much as an ant could get in now. Well, there really are not any ants outside the village anyway. <laughs> Good point. How about you two? Any luck reaching the border? I'm afraid not. I've tried several times, but I couldn't get through. Last time the connection was shaky, but we managed. However, now it seems impossible. Maybe it's the new bounded field? That's possible. Definitely possible. You all hear that? Gerda, we're stepping out for a little bit. We'll be right back. Kay! I can sense them. There appear to be several giants wandering around near the village. Perhaps they still think there is a hole in the bounded field and do not know it was reinforced. They keep going around the same location in circles over and over. It's possible they may give up if we leave them be, but they may not. Guess whoever fixed up the bounded field missed a few. Fine by me. We'll just have to clean up the cleanup. Let's go. Right on. Let's try to keep it quiet so we don't disturb their beauty sleep. Understood. Oops, I was just kidding, okay? Yes, I'm aware. Man, you're beautiful. Please stop. <laughs> Your cold demeanor makes it even better. All right, my new grand army. Onward to battle. Fucking Napoleon. Alright, two East Ulfers, that's easy. Of course, he had to crit Anna. Oh, there we go. There's a good one. That's a nice crit rate. This should do some good damage. I really gotta work on getting Anna to MP5 on my personal account. That and getting the last of the gold bows for her. I almost have her like fully maxed out. Well, then I gotta work on Bond. That should be too bad. Oh, come on! She didn't get an 80! 
Anna, what are you doing to me? Oh well. We made it back inside the village without incident. I know I brought this up earlier too, but it just doesn't feel right jumping over the gate. It's a symbol of peace and protection for everyone in this village, after all. Fo fo fo! We servants are strong enough that we could bust right through it, bolt and all. But if we pushed, if we pushed hard enough, but that would no doubt be a lot worse. Besides, you know, it would be weird for us to just come up and knock in the middle of the night after we picked a fight with the envoys. So if those are our choices. I don't have a problem sneaking in. I'm sorry, I've been a bit cavalier about that sort of thing since my Grand Army days. That's quite enough, Napoleon. Oh, uh, right, sorry. There you are. You were out for so long, I started to worry. Are you alright? Are you cold? Sorry to worry you. Everything's fine. We just went for a bit of a walk, is all. A walk? Fofo! Hey, stop it, foe. You're tickling me. <laughs> okay, settle down. I have to talk to Lady Mash. You see, I finally realized something. Foe? Lady Mash? Between you and Mr. Napoleon and the person who showed up outside the gate, I think I understand now. There are other people out there besides the envoys. Which means... You and Lord John aren't really envoys after all, are you? I... I'm sorry, I've been wrong this whole time. But even if you aren't envoys, I still think you're great, Lady Mash. Things were so crazy during the Ordained Day that I never got to say that before. So I'm really glad you came back and that I got a chance to tell you. <laughs> I feel so much better now. Thank you for coming to see me again, Lady Mash. You're welcome. Alright, that's section 10 down. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not looking forward to the boss fight here in section 11. Because it's the most fucking obnoxious thing I've ever had to deal with in this fucking game. Well, one of the most, ob probably the most obnoxious thing I'll have to deal with in this last belt, honestly. I can't stress enough how much I don't like this fucking fight. <laughs> but we'll save that for next time. When I want to fucking rip my hair out and kill myself. I'll see you guys then. <laughs> Should be a fun episode. <laughs> Bye!